Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronis with it and Atro, and this is going to be a beginner's guide to skin retouching and you're going to be understanding each and everything about skin retouching, color grading, how to remove blemishes and how to do your dodging and burning to add shape or dimension to your images and finally how to export your images in Photoshop so that you can have a sharp and really nice and beautiful and a more professional image from your skin retouching process in just photoshop so the very first thing we are going to be doing we're going to first of all import the image into our photoshop so in order to import an image into photoshop you have to simply come and look for that image that you're going to be uh, editing so just get the image and drag it so you left click and drag it into your photoshop interface and that is one way of importing the image into Photoshop. So this is the image you're going to be retouching in this very uh, tutorial. So I'm just going to close this. So this is the image taken by Oscar Antege and I'm going to put the link in the description of this very video. So this is the image you're going to uh, be retouching. So his link is going to be in the description of this very video and the Photoshop version I'm using I'm using the 2020 version of Photoshop. So the very first thing you have to know about skin retouching is, so what you have to understand is skin retouching is basically how to even out the skin tones so that you can have a nice and smooth transition in the skin tone and remove, it also involves the removal of the blemishes or acne in the images you're going to be retouching uh, in this very tutorial so what you have to understand is how to first of all clean up the skin you can see this is a very beautiful image uh, for this case so what you have to notice or understand is how to remove blemishes from your portraits in photoshop so in order to remove blemishes we usually don't want to work on our background layer we always want to work on a separate layer so that we can always have a backup when you're trying to clean up or remove the blemishes from the images in Photoshop so in order to create this new layer simply come and make sure the background layer is selected and just left click and drag and drop to this new layer icon or you can simply click Control or command J so control J or command J and you create a new Copy from the background there. So that is the layer we are going to be Working on in order to clean up this image or in order to remove the blemishes from this particular Image, so this is the new layer we are talking about So if at all you want you can name it or you can rename it to maybe I'm just going to rename that to uh, blemishes just like that so we have different tools we can use to clean up or remove blemishes so i'm just going to come right here i'm going to come to the spot healing brush tool so if at all you click right here and you right click you have a spot healing brush tool so how this tool basically works it is really an automatic kind of tool if at all you set it to content aware so when you come right here and you always make sure that whichever tool you're using in Photoshop, always make sure that the caps lock key is off. That is the very first tip you have to understand. And if at all it is on, you're going to notice that the tool is going to be like this cross-like icon you can see right on the screen area. So always make sure that the caps lock key is off. So when I turn it off, you can see that the tool is now looking the way it is meant to be. So I'm going to simply so in order to increase or decrease on the tool you're using for a blemish removal, you can simply use uh, the brackets. So these are like the box brackets on the keyboard. So the left box bracket uh, reduces on the size of the tool and the right box bracket increases on the size. And in order to zoom in the image or zoom out, you can use command plus on the keyboard or control plus and control minus to either zoom in or zoom out on the images so basically that is how you zoom in or zoom out so in order to remove a blemish you can simply 
make sure it is slightly uh, bigger than all the tool is slightly bigger than the blemish you're trying to remove so how the spot healing brush tool works you just come and click over the blemish and it's going to be automatically removed by photoshop because it is set to content aware so photoshop is going to automatically be replacing that area with a blemish or pimple in this case uh, with a cleaner part of the skin that is really nice and sweet of photoshop so it is going to do this but uh, this tool is really nice and it works amazingly if at all you don't have all the time in the world to sit and remove blemishes but sometimes it is not going to be really perfect so the other tool you have to understand is the healing brush tool so how this works you have to come and set uh, if at all you have a new blank layer and it is not filled or it has no information you can simply come and select current and blow because you want to sample information from both the background and now place it on that new blank layer but if at all you have filled layers for this case you can simply use current layer or all layers so that is not going to matter because the all of the layers in this case have information embedded in them so this is the healing brush tool so how this basically works you hold down the alternate key so when you hold it down and click on so you left click on that a clean area next to the blemish so meaning you're going to be copying clean skin or a clean area of the skin and now when you release both the alternate key and the left click button and you click over the blemish you're going to notice that it's going to uh, replace that blemish or remove it uh, in this particular case so that is how the healing brush tool works so you're just going to do that and see how it cleans up the skin so hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on a clean area and just click over that blemish to get rid of it and this is really nice and this tool basically works that like uh, the spot or rather uh, the clone stamp tool at uh, to clean up so right now this is like the opposite of the spot healing brush tool because for this case we are now uh, manually selecting and replacing those blemishes by ourselves unlike the spot healing brush tool where photoshop was determining and replacing the uh, blemishes uh, with a cleaner part of the skin automatically so this is how this tool works so alternate you click on a clean area you left click on a clean area while still holding on the alternate key on the keyboard and now release both the alternate and the left click and simply left click on the blemish to get rid of it so that is how this tool works so this tool works uh, like uh, the clone stamp tool so make sure the mode is normal opacity and flow at 100 and now increase on the size so when you hold down the alternate key and left click on a clean area next to the blemish and release both buttons and now left click on all over the blemish you're going to be able to eliminate or remove as uh, a blemish from a particular area so alternate click on this area and just click over that to uh, get rid of it from uh, that particular area so this is how you clean up skin so the last tool you're going to uh, be looking at is going to be i'm just going to undo that the last tool we are going to be looking at is going to be our uh, patch tool for blemish removal or cleaning up the skin before uh, we can dive into the skin retouching technique or process in this uh, case so let's just clean up this and you can see it is really doing a nice and amazing job uh, to clean up uh, the skin in this particular case so you have to always zoom in and zoom out in order to see every tiny blemish or skin imperfection in the images you're going to uh, be retouching so i'm basically using the uh, clone stamp tool to clean up uh, the skin so the other tool you're going to be learning about is going to be 
uh, the patch tool. So the patch tool, like the name suggests, is or when you right click and come to the patch tool, make sure the source is the destination and it is a normal tool. So how this works, I'm just going to slightly zoom in. How this works, you simply left click and draw over the blemish just like that. So after selecting the blemish, you can simply drag that selection by simply left clicking and dragging that selection to a clean area to replace that blemish in that case. So you can see the before and after. We have just removed that big skin imperfection from that area. So I'm just going to come to the forehead and we use the patch tool. So simply left click and draw over the blemish and now move that selection to a clean area to replace it. So I think uh, the patch tool is really nice and works best uh, when I'm trying to remove blemishes from uh, most of the images I be retouching in Photoshop. So let's just do this and clean up uh, this area of the skin before we can dive into the in-depth and understanding the technique of skin retouching uh, in Photoshop. So let's just clean up that. I'm just going to come. I think that selection was bad. So I'm just going to come and select this fly away here and do that. So I'm basically trying to clean up the skin area because I don't want us to do more of the skin cleaning up after we have done the skin retouching uh, to this particular image. So I think we have cleaned up the skin really nice and well. So let's see if at all we have cleaned up uh, the neck area. So remember when you're doing skin retouching you always have to make sure that you mind more of every part of the body or the body of the models we are trying to uh, do the skin retouching on so i'm basically trying to reduce on these uh, lines in the neck using the patch tool so i'm basically drawing and dragging to a cleaner area to clean up uh, the neck area too so i think uh, this looks nice and fine so the next part after you have uh, cleaned up the skin or removed the blemishes, so you can sh you can see rather the before and after for the blemish removal or cleaning up. So what we want to do right now, we want to understand the concept of skin retouching. So basically, in this tutorial, we want to learn about uh, frequency separation. So basically, what is frequency separation? Frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two. So basically it divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So the high frequency layer is going to be containing the textures in this case, and the low frequency layer is going to be containing the skin tones or the colors in this particular image. So we just want to create those two layers. So we are just going to basically I duplicate the blemish the blemishes layer by hitting ctrl or command j just like that and we're just going to rename this to low since this layer is lower than this one just going to name it to low frequency and you're going to name the upper layer high frequency just like that so after we have named these layers we only want to understand what we have to remain with in these particular layers so like i've mentioned before the low frequency layer is going to be containing our colors and the skin tones and the high frequency layer is going to be containing the textures in this particular image i'm just going to turn off the high frequency layer and i'm going to select the low frequency layer so after i have selected this low frequency layer i'm going to simply Come so that I can retain the colors and the skin tones. I'm going to come to filter, then come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So when I come to Gaussian blur, always make sure that you turn the radius all the way to a 0 0.1 and make sure that the preview option is also on or checked. So when I zoom out like this, 
by clicking on this tool and I have my image. So this is more of the same image, but in this little window right here, which is titled Gaussian Blur. So I'm just going to zoom in the image just like that. So when you look at this image, you have to look for that area that has more textures than the rest of uh, the skin of the model. So for this case, we are going to go with the nose area of the model so what we want to do we only want to remain with the colors and the skin tones in this particular case so in order to remain with the colors you can see we have this little option right down here so when you left click on this option and move towards the right hand side you're going to notice that it is going to be increasing the radius but at the image is going to start Closing out on the details. So just want to move it to a point when you are starting to lose out on the skin details in this particular case. So when you come and left click, so you have to move your left click while releasing as you're looking at the progress right here. So don't mind about this, just look at the, the, the details right here. So just move it just like that up to that point when you're no longer looking or seeing uh, the details and in this image. So just move it at that point. So I think at around eight. So at around eight, we have lost out on the details or we have started losing out on the details in this particular skin area of the model. So you have to click and ensure that every detail has been lost because the details we lose right here are going to be regained in this high frequency layer and the colors and the skin tones embedded in this layer are going to be transferred down to the low frequency layer. That is what we want to do. So we are just going to come and use the radius of 8 after ensuring that it has enabled us to lose out on the details in the skin area and come and simply hit OK. So when you hit OK, the image is going to look a little bit blurry and is not going to be having any textures or details in the skin area. So right now come to the high frequency layer and now activate it. So remember we had turned it off. So come and select it and activate it and the image is going to come back. But this image is going to, is going to still be containing uh, every detail. So we only want to remain with the textures in this particular high frequency layer so we just want to remove the colors and drop them in this low frequency layer and in order to do this you have to notice that this image is an 8-bit image remember when we are applying this step we have to notice the bit mode of the image so when I come to uh, image and I come to apply image uh, you can see it brings up this little window into Photoshop. So remember the source is always going to be the name of the image. So the layer you have to come, remember we, only want, we just want to drop these colors and the skin tones in the low frequency layer. So come and select wh where we are going to be dropping those colors and the skin tones. That is the low frequency layer in this case. And right now in order to understand the concept of frequency separation you have to know the bit ratio of your images so this is going to be determining this is going to rather be determining uh, the blending option you're going to be selecting so if at all you have a 16-bit image come and change the blending mode from our uh, multiply and change it to add and make sure the opacity is 100 Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. The scale is 2 and offset 0. Make sure that the preview is on and make sure you select invert. And when you do that, you're going to notice that uh, we have gotten rid of the colors. And this great kind of layer contains on only the textures in this case. But since we are dealing with an 8-bit mode image, we're going to change the blending mode from, uh, remember it was initially in multiply. So we are just going to change it to subtract since it is an 8-bit image. Opacity at 100. Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. 
make sure you put a scale of 2 and offset 128 because we want to get a f uh, the textures on a 50% gray kind of layer. Remember, the RGB contains 2, 5, 6 colors. So when you divide that by 2, you'll get a median which is uh, 128 and meaning that median is going to be a gray kind of color. So make sure you put a scale of 2 and offset 128 and make sure the invert option is not checked. And when it is not checked, you're going to notice that uh, when your preview is on, you're going to notice that when I zoom in, com control plus, you're going to notice that the textures are on this gray kind of layer. And when you notice that you have gotten to this step and the textures are on this gray kind of layer, simply come and hit OK. But now the image has turned out to look really awkward. So come to the blending mode and change it from normal and scroll all the way down to linear light. So when you select linear light, you are going to be getting back the image the way it was initially before. So right now we want to confirm if at all we have successfully uh, divided the frequencies or divided the image into the textures and the colors. So we're going to select these two layers by holding down Ctrl or Command and clicking on both layers and hitting Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard. And you're going to name this to frequency separation. So when I turn this on and off, you can see apart from the blemish removal, the whole image is really still intact. And that implies that we have successfully divided the frequencies in this particular image into, if at all I turn off this, you can see that we only have the tones and if at all I select this and turn off this you can see that this layer has more of the textures into the image so I'm just going to turn this back on so that the image can really look nice and balanced so right now what we want to do we want to even out the skin tones in this particular image so that we can have nice and smooth transitions within the skin tones in this particular case and in order to do that we're going to be using two tools yeah two particular tools that is the mixer brush tool and the lasso tool to enable us achieve that seamless nice transition in the skin tones of this particular image and in order to do that we're going to come to the high frequency layer and select it and after selecting it we want a layer that is going to guide us and show us the uneven skin tone transitions in this particular image and that layer is going to be a black and white layer so when you select the high frequency layer and come down here and you click on this adjustment layer and come and click on black and white the image is going to be or oh, it is going to turn into black and white and it is going to create a black and white layer in inside our frequency separation group so come to the red channel and left click on this little op tool right here and now move it towards the left hand side and when you do that you're going to notice that the image is going to not only be dark but also be exposing the uneven skin tone transitions in this case so after doing that come and close this so you have to scroll down down and select the layer that is going to be containing our colors and the skin tones in this particular case so after selecting the selecting that layer simply come and right click under the brushes and look for what is called a mixer brush tool so this is not just a brush tool it is called a mixer brush tool so after you have selected that mixer brush tool you can simply right click here for other versions if at all you don't have the mixer brush tool i think your tool is going to be around here just as far as i can recall but right now we only need a mixer brush tool so we want to set up this mixer brush tool that in a way that it is going to be enabling us even out the transitions in the skin tones so come right here so this is why we have to set up this mixer brush tool we are going to simply come and make sure when you click down here, make sure you select clean brush. 
So we have two options right here. The very first option is going to be load the brush after each and every stroke. And the second option is going to be clean the brush after each and every stroke. Remember, we don't want to carry color as we are evening out or having a seamless skin tone transition. We just want to have the brush cleaned after each and every stroke. So come and select this second option right here. So a uh, wetness you're going to be using. Remember, the higher the wetness, the more color spill you're going to be having in the image. And the lower the wetness, the more control you are going to be having with the wetness of your mixer brush. So the load you're going to be using a load of 75, the mix of 90% and the flow of 100 I always prefer to use these settings because they, I have always tried them and they give me the best results from the skin retouching process. So make sure that sample alias is not checked or marked because when you select this option, it means when you start painting on the skin area, it is also going to be adding textures in this very image. So if at all I check this and I increase on the size of uh, the brush, and start painting you can uh, notice that it is, it is going to be adding more textures into the image for this case so I don't want to sample all that so let me just zoom in so that you can see the effect it brings to the image you can see right on the forehead right here if at all I show you what I have just done if at all I just repaint there you can see it adds this unnatural and not nice looking effect to the skin of the model. So I'm just going to undo that. So after you have done all that, just zoom into the image or the face of the model for this case. And now reduce on the size. So how we are going to be evening out the tones. Make sure sample alias is not checked and select your low frequency layer. And now how we are going to be blending, you're going to be uh, simply make sure that you reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool depending on the area you're trying to blend or even out. So how we are going to be blending, we are basically going to left click. So when you left click, you're going to be pressing hard the brush onto the image and start moving. So up with the left click button held down, simply start evening out just like that so how we are blending we are blending the mid-tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone of this image and as you're mixing make sure you don't uh, move your brush from or drag it from the highlights the shadows because that is going to be uh, producing or changing the original facial structure of the model so make sure you remain within are uh, the highlights or how light is falling on that particular area so if at all i turn off the black and white layer and i click on this eyeball icon you can see the before and after of what we have just done using just a few strokes of uh, the mixer brush tool in photoshop so i'm just going to turn this back on and reduce on the size so as you're mixing make sure you don't over zoom in to this level because when you do this you're not going to be able to see every uneven skin tone always make sure that you uh, command minus and have a reasonable zoom before you start evening out or blending uh, the skin tones of your images so i think that is fine i'm just going to zoom out because i don't want to overdo the evening out of the skin tones so i'm just going to start a uh, blending or evening out uh, the skin tones so as i am doing this you're going to notice that i'm moving my brush uh, in a top down kind of movement just like that so we have shadows right here i'm just going to left click and hold down and move this up and down to apply the effect of uh, my mixer brush tool just like that so it's like we are doing more of the contouring process uh, used by makeup artists but this time you are doing it uh, digitally so just turn this off and see the before and after before after 
we are still retaining the original skin details of this model so you can as well work without uh, the whole player or the black and white player but i would always and always recommend that i use the black and white layer to help you see those uneven skin tones quite well but if at all you do trust your site you can uh, work without it it's not a must so let's just blend this so i'm going to turn this on and i'm going to I'm just going to turn it off slightly and i just want to work on this area because i couldn't see every uneven skin tone in this particular area so you have to keep using it or applying it it has to be like an, an on and off kind of technique because you want to use it as a check layer so when you use it as a check layer you're going to notice that you're going to even out every single area of uh, the model's face or the model's skin so just do that when it comes to the, no the nose area i'm going to turn it back on so you can see the unevenness right here so we just want to create that smooth transition uh, between the skin tones in the nose area just like that so i'm just going to move it right here and even out these tiny tones on those particular areas so i think that is fine so i'm going to come to the highlight and i'm going to apply the effect right there just like that so come right here and you can see i hadn't seen these uneven skin tones right here because i was using as a color layer and it wasn't really showing me those areas i to target them and do the blending even more so i'm just going to zoom out to see what i've done so i'm just going to continue evening out at uh, this unevenness in the skin area just like that so i'm just going to turn it off and show you guys the before and after before after we have just evened out the skin tones in this particular image so this is more of uh, the very first step so after we have blended or even out the skin tones you're going to be using the second technique that is going to be the use of uh, the lasso tool method of uh, frequency separation skin retouching so i think uh, this is fine before after before after so i think i have a tiny highlight right here so let me just try to blend it into the skin just like that so let me come to the neck area and also even out the tones in the neck area of the model so increase on the size and just come and blend or even out the skin tones in uh, the neck area just like that so i'm basically trying to even out uh, the uneven tones or skin tones in the neck area and how i'm doing this i'm simply left clicking and dragging and trying to mix and have that seamless transition uh, within the skin tones of this particular image just like that and after we have done this we're going to incorporate a second technique that that is going to uh, fine tune the image even more so i think that looks fine so you can see the before after before after we have just evened out on the skin tones in the neck area too so i'm going to select the black and white layer because right now we no longer need that layer and hit delete on the keyboard or you can simply drag it and drop it to this trash can icon to delete it so come back and select the low frequency layer and come and select the lasso tool so this is uh, the lasso tool and now make sure you use a feathering of uh, above 20 pixels between 20 and 25 and make sure and alias is selected so right now it is okay to zoom into the image even more and come and select or draw a selection and in order to draw this selection simply left click and start moving over the skin area so always make sure to select only what is meant to be skin in your images so i'm just going to come and select that area I'm just going to deselect and reselect so 
left click and now move uh, the cursor or your mouse all over the skin area and just like that so you only have to select the skin area and you shouldn't select the hair and the outlines of your images so come to filter and come back to blur and come to gaussian blur so for this case you can simply move this up to a point when you're losing out on the skin details or when the skin starts looking nice and even so click or left click on this area and move it to the right hand side up to a point when you feel like you have a nice transition or nice details into the skin area of your images so i think at around 24 i have a nice detail or nice details within the skin area and simply hit ok or the other option you can use remember we had eight a radius of eight so when you multiply eight by three you're going to be having the nice skin detail or nice transition transition within the skin area of your images so i'm going first of all so whichever radius you had when you're creating your freaking separation make sure you multiply it by three so for this case i'm just going to type in 24 and i'm going to be good to go so i think that looks fine so you can now apply that onto the rest of the image just like that so simply right click and come to gaussian blur so we're just going to be applying that effect onto the overall image so right click and come to gaussian blur just like that so that we can have a nice detail uh, in the image we are trying to retouch in this particular case just like that so uh, the one drawing these shapes i'm simply i'm moving or drawing that shape the way the area is selected so if at all you feel like the uh, effect is too much for your liking you can simply let me just show you how it is done so right click and come to uh, gaussian blur so if at all you feel like the effect is too much you can simply come and hit shift command f on the keyboard and you, it is going to be bringing the opacity reduction option right now and simply hit ok if at all you feel like it is fine with you so we're just going to come to this other side of the nose right click and come to gaussian blur just like that and do the same for this other area and when it comes to the nose area i wouldn't recommend to apply this effect because it's going to be uh, showing you an unnatural result from uh, your skin retouching process so just come and right click and come to gaussian blur just like that and we are just going to apply it right on this other side of the lip so it has to be a gradual uh, process for your uh, selections because if at all you select the whole face in general it is going to be really showing you unnatural results from your skin retouching process so let's see the before and after for the skin retouching so this is the before and after before after before and after and when you feel like uh, the effect is too much for your liking you can simply come to this frequent separation folder and you can simply reduce or drop down on the effect so i'm just going to leave it as the way it is because it was introducing back the details that we had lost out uh, in the skin area so after doing all that i'm going to simply come to this layer remember we are now done doing the skin retouching to this image i'm going to come to the frequency separation group and after closing it simply hit shift alternate command e on the keyboard or shift alternate control e on the keyboard and i'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting control or command j then what i'm going to do i'm going to slightly brighten the neck area of the model so i'm going to come and get my quick selection tool so increase on the size by using the box brackets and i'm just going to click over the neck area just like that and zoom in slightly reduce on the size and click towards this side just like that and if at all you want to deselect a particular area hold down alternate and it's going to bring a minus option 
and you can uh, reduce on uh, that selection or eliminate that selection so after I have selected that neck area simply come to you can use the curves or levels so I'm just going to be using curves and now after that make a midpoint and click and just slightly brighten up uh, the neck area so that it can slightly uh, match with the face of uh, the model just like that so I'm just going to show you guys the before and after, before, after, before, after. And when you feel like it is really still not enough, you can simply come back to selective color. And now after coming to selective color, hold down the alternate. It's going to bring up this clipping option and clip it to this selection. So alternate and click right in the middle and click right here to clip the e effect. So right now we just want to eliminate the amount of uh, yellows in the red so let's just try to eliminate that so I think introducing yellows is going to be okay and now slightly introduce a little bit of magentas and reduce on the amount of blacks right there to the neck area and I think that this is really fine and matching with the face of the model so what I want to do I want to do a little bit of dodging and burning remember what is dodging and burning? Dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows in a particular image. So in order to enhance those highlights and shadows, you're going to be using uh, a contouring process that is going to add more shape or add more dimension to this image. So you're going to come to the curves adjustment layer and make and select it. And after doing that, make a midpoint and now brighten until the image starts to look a little bit overexposed and now close this and make sure that this is selected hit ctrl or command i on the keyboard to hide that effect remember we have just brightened remember dodging brightens and burning darkens so just going to name that layer dodge and they're going to come down here and they're going to do the same for the darkening part curves and now make a midpoint and click left click and now move down to darken just like that make sure that this is selected and hit ctrl command i on the keyboard and you're going to name this burn just like that so we're going to select both layers by holding down ctrl command and hit ctrl command g to put these two in a group and you're going to name this group dodge and burn just like that so I'm going to open this. Remember, we just want to add shape or dimension to uh, this particular image. So in order to add shape or dimension, I'm going to come and select, first of all, the dodge layer. So remember, dodging, you enhance more of the highlights in the image. And when you're burning, we enhance more of the shadows in the image. So I'm going to come to or under the brushes and right click and get my brush tool. It is a soft round brush. I'm going to be using an opacity of around 8% and a flow of 100%. I'm just going to start painting over every area I feel should have a highlight. So before painting, remember, change and have black and white. So in order to do this, you can simply reset by clicking on these color swatches. And to get white on top, make sure you use these arrows or you can use X on the keyboard to get white on top remember in photoshop white reviews and black hides so i'm just going to reduce on the size by using the brackets i'm going to simply start painting on areas that i feel should have had a highlight so i'm just going to paint over that area just like that i'm just going to come to the forehead and just contour that area too just going to enhance more of this cheek area. So let's see the before and after for that area. I think that looks fine. Just going to enhance uh, the highlight on the nose. And after doing that, I'm going to come to the burn and also do the same for this time around. I'm just going to enhance more of uh, on the shadow area of the model. So I'm just going to enhance this nice cheekbone that we had before so i'm just going to paint like that mm -hmm. 
and come to this side of the nose and just darken just like that. So you can see that we are getting back the facial structures of the model. You can see before, after, before, after. And when you feel like the effect is too much for your liking, you can simply reset to black and get the brush to turn into black. And you can reduce on the effect, for example, for the dodge area on that chin, before, after, before, after. You have just added shape or dimension to the model's face. So the last thing we have to do right now is the color grading. So in order to color grade this image, we are going to simply come to selective color. And after it has been activated, come under the blacks because I always want to intensify on the blacks in the images I retouch. I'm going to come to the blacks and move click, left click and move this towards the right hand side to enhance more of the darks in the image and come to the yellows and just uh, move it towards the left hand side to add that kind of popping feel to the image you can see before and after the image really looks nice and it is popping i think that's too much so the last thing for skin retouching that we have to do basically is creating a stamp visible and do a little bit more of the color grading into the camera roll filter so i'm just going to create another stamp visible layer by hitting shift alternate command e on the keyboard or shift alternate control e on the keyboard and i'm going to duplicate to duplicate it by hitting control or command j and i'm going to come to filter and come to the camera filter so you're just going to be doing a little bit of color grading and eye and teeth whitening for this particular image so i'm just going to click in the eye area to zoom in or you can use Control or command plus to zoom into the eye area and you can hold down the space bar and left click to move over To a different area. So I'm just going to come to the adjustment brush tool Remember for eye and teeth whitening. We are dealing with the whites in The areas for example the white area of the eye and the white area of the teeth so remember if at all We have yellow color in the white area of the eye. So I've just selected at the adjustment brush tool so i want to set it up in a way that it is going to be eliminating these colors remember we can see some kind of yellow color in the white area of the eye remember the opposite of yellow is blue so click left click and move towards the blue side so just going to move it to around negative 24 and since we have some greens in the white area of the eye i'm just going to left click and move towards the opposite of green which is magenta to around 64 and since i want the eyes to pop i'm just going to simply push my whites up a little bit to around five and my highlights to around i'm just going to go with around five two and since we have color in the white area of the eye i'm just going to simply move the saturation all the way down to around negative 65 and increase on the size by using the box brackets on the keyboard and start painting over the white area to whiten the eyes just like that and this is going to really transform the image so just click and paint over only the white area and you can as well paint over this catch light to make the eye really pop a little bit more so hold down the space bar key and left click and uh, move towards the right the direction you want to move to and now come and paint over the second eye so just do that and don't paint over this because that area is naturally not white so make sure you only paint over what you feel should be white in uh, the white or in the eye area so command minus to zoom out and you can see that this has given the image a really different mode so come to the teeth area and reduce on the size and paint over the teeth so how this is done you should paint over each and every individual tooth alone and you should not paint over the lips because it's going to be desaturating or removing color from those particular areas so you have to be careful with this very step and now hit ctrl command minus to zoom out just like that and you can see the before and the after for the eyes and the image really looks nice and it is really popping so i'm going to come to the 
uh, local adjustments i'm just going to come to the hso panel to color grade this image even more so i feel like the image has so much of the reds in it i'm just going to come to the hue area and i'm going to move the reds towards the oranges just like that to eliminate the magentas that are in the skin tone of the model just like that i just want to eliminate those magentas to around uh, 15 i'm sorry about the noise in the background so i think uh, that looks fine i'm sorry guys if at all you can hear any noise in the background i'm just going to reduce on the saturation of the oranges a little bit to around negative a uh, negative six and i think uh, that looks fine and i'm going to hit ok to open the image back into photoshop so you can see the before and the after for our color grading process and now what i want to do i want to add a little, a little bit of contrast to the image so i'm just going to come to brightness and contrast and push up my contrast a little bit more to around just going to go with around 10 percent for my contrast because the image wasn't looking nice before and after and it is now really popping so right now we want to export the image the best way i'm going to simply come to file and come to export and come to export as so when you come to the export as option it is going to open this little window right here and this window is going to determine the amount of details you want into your image and the format you want your image to be exported in so come and select the format i prefer a jpeg so you can choose whichever format the quality of course should be 100 percent so in order to have a sharp exported image come and select the resampling or resample tool by cubic sharper because we want details into the image i'm going to leave the canvas and canvas size that is the width and height at the defaults and make sure you select or check convert srgb and embed color profile because these are going to determine or show the colors that are going to be embedded in the images remember there are those cases whereby you have exported the image and after you have posted it on social media or uploaded it on a given website it has those color change or color shift issues so always make sure to select or check these options and hit export and when you have selected export you can rename the image to whatever you want so i'm just going to name this to a beginner's guide just like that and now select the location where you want the image to be saved so i'm going to be using the desktop as my location for saving the image and after doing that i'm just going to uh, hit save and it is going to take a few seconds and after it has saved it is automatically going to close this window in photoshop so just going to give it a few seconds and it is going to close this window after it has saved the image so you can see this is all we have done for skin retouching so let's say overall before and after so this was the image initially before and this is the after before after before after so if at all you have loved this story don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very very first time ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet more tutorials on this channel don't forget to keep practicing keep creating and keep retouching